today the U.S. House passed a bill by a very strong majority that would force the company, the Chinese company that owns TikTok to divest TikTok, to sell it to someone else in the U.S., or to be banned from America's app stores. Now, to be clear, the bill did not ban TikTok outright. So if you see that in a headline somewhere, just know that's an incorrect headline with a lazy editor. That is wrong. The bill today was called, is called, the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. Rolls trippingly off the tongue, doesn't it? It was a bill that was sponsored by Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher of Louisiana, had a ton of co-sponsors. And the bill would do a number of things. By the way, one of the services that I would strongly suggest you to get real familiar with, people who've watched the show before know this from me, I'm going to say it again, I'm going to keep saying it, congress.gov is a huge trove of information about everything that goes on at the House and the Senate. And if you know where to look, oh my God, it's super useful. The way that the bill is written, if you look at just the summary from the Congressional Research Service, which is the in-house research arm of Congress, it creates a term for something called a foreign adversary controlled application. So an app that is controlled by a foreign ad adversary to the United States. And what this bill would do is it would define what that is. It defines a foreign adversary controlled application as either something that ByteDance owns. ByteDance is the Chinese company that owns TikTok and other apps. Or it would give the president the power to determine that a social media company that is controlled by a foreign adversary presents a significant threat to national security. So for example, if, and I'm making this up, if North Korea created a, a photo editing app and the president believed that the app contained spyware that the North Koreans could use to harm America, this bill would allow the president to ban that app from the country. It says that the prohibition does not apply to apps that are primarily used to post product reviews, business reviews, or travel information and reviews. Now, when I read that, I immediately thought of the app Temu, T-E-M-U. You may have seen a bunch of Super Bowl ads for it. That app is also a Chinese company, and it is used to post lots of product reviews because it's like a knockoff Amazon. So I'm not sure why that's in the bill. Maybe I just need to do a little more reading, but as soon as I read that, I was like, so TikTok is out, but Tamu is, is cool? We're cool with that one? Okay. And this would basically allow the Department of Justice to make sure that this bill is followed. Any applications that are covered by this would have to be able to provide you with all of your account data for your use so you could see whatever they had collected on you, if you requested anyway, before the ban would take effect. So that's basically what the bill would do. It passed overwhelmingly. If you look at the site of the clerk of the house, which is just clerk.house.gov, you can see that the bill passed by a very strong margin, 352 yay votes, 65 nay votes, it passed with very strong bipartisan support, although more Democrats opposed it than Republicans opposed it, but still it was majorities of both. And also not surprisingly, TikTok says that it is going to fight this in court as vigorously as it can. The website Bloomberg News cites people familiar with the matter saying that TikTok is gonna fight this in court, not surprisingly. The company has opposed this before. The company's had some success opposing this in court before. It's also important to note that if it did come down to it, right, if it did come down to TikTok needing to be sold or being forced to be sold or banned or whatever, or sold to prevent a ban, that the Chinese government has some say in that as well. And the Chinese government has made it clear it will not allow a forced sale, period. And the U.S. doesn't really have any direct diplomatic or economic leverage to force China to do that, the Chinese government says it will not do that. Chinese government's also been trying to exert more control over tech companies like TikTok, or tech companies like ByteDance, which owns TikTok. And that has caused the value of some of those companies to drop. So the companies don't particularly like Chinese government control. It is not logical to say that they just dig the fact that they're part of the, uh, that, that, 
that's not necessarily the case. They may be at the mercy of the Chinese government and have to do the government's bidding if they want to survive as a corporation. But they have seen the economic impact of letting Xi Jinping's government have too much control over a variety of economic sectors. And a lot of the Chinese public is not really happy about some of the ways in which the Chinese government has clamped down and clamped down on the economy when it's been kind of booming and booming. It's hard to be part of the free market economy when you're not from a free country. Those things have been in conflict for a while. So it's not a cinch that this would work. It's also not a cinch that this measure would survive. You might remember during the Trump administration that Donald Trump as president tried to just ban TikTok outright through his executive power without going through Congress. And back in 2020, a federal judge blocked that attempt to ban TikTok in the United States. That was the second time that it had lost in court. The federal judge said that the Trump administration overstepped its emergency economic powers to basically put the app out of business. The company, TikTok, showed that Trump officials, and I'm quoting from the ruling, quote, failure to adequately consider an obvious and reasonable alternative before banning TikTok, unquote, made the crackdown, in the court's words, arbitrary and capricious. And to be clear, the judge who heard this case was appointed by Donald Trump. So th this was a very strong blow against what the administration could do. This comes from the legislature, from Congress. It's not entirely clear whether this would become law. And I wanna be clear, if you use TikTok today, you are within the law to continue using the app. The app has not been banned, it's not been restricted. App stores may do what they wanna do. So if, you know, if Google Play or the Apple you know, App Store decided that it was going to remove TikTok, that's another matter, that's company to company. This is government to company. That's where the controversy is, is whether the government can do that. We also heard from some members of Congress yesterday. There were protests outside of the Capitol today and yesterday, relatively small, very peaceful, from a few lawmakers, members of the U.S. House, and also from small business owners who said that the potential of banning TikTok in the U.S. would be very damaging to them. The various members of Congress spoke about this in various different ways to try to explain why they felt that this was unnecessary and that it would not actually protect the U.S. from, and here's the big issue, spying by the Chinese government, that they would use TikTok as a way to collect our information. I want to play you a clip from Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs. She's a Democrat from Southern California. She's in the San Diego area. Talking about how she views this and her perspective that this would not do anything to protect us from China. By the way, she uses an acronym in this clip that you're going to hear, PRC, that's People's Republic of China. It's one of those things that members of Congress kind of throw around and they don't define when they say it because they get so used to being around other members of Congress. But that's what she's referring to. And Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs voted against this bill today, but here is what she had to say about it yesterday. Look, I sit on both the House Foreign Affairs and the House Armed Services Committees. So I assure you, I fully understand the threats that are posed by the PRC. But the thing is, censoring and trampling on the civil liberties of 150 million Americans who use TikTok every day isn't the answer. Banning TikTok doesn't even mean we'll be protected from disinformation and misuse of our personal data, which American data brokers can still sell and do routinely and frequently, including to foreign counterparts. We need comprehensive data privacy legislation and thoughtful guardrails for social media platforms. Not another red scare. Not a single thing that we heard in today's classified briefing was unique to TikTok. It was things that happen on every single social media platform. And frankly, the threats that they were talking to us about are things that will continue happening on every single social media platform, even if this legislation passes. To an extent, I agree with her. I hear what she's saying, and some of you also mentioned this in the chat. I see Debbie NYC over on X. Hello, welcome, thanks for watching. Debbie wrote, don't all these platforms spy on us and each other? China spies on us, we spy on them, everybody's spying. Why make a big deal about this particular instance? Well, Debbie NYC, I hear you to an extent. I think that the idea 
that the United States government has never, ever, would absolutely positively never use your social media information to get any personal data on you. We, we just, we know that you would have to be, you would have have to been born yesterday to believe that. And there's been other reporting about the efforts by the US government to try to get information. I mean, this was the whole, this is the whole drama that I think people like Edward Snowden, what like them or not, have been trying to at least get us to talk about and we already know that there's a lot of data that these social networks grab, whether we want them to grab it or not. Now, in terms of spying, that's a different matter. Spying implies that the information that is gathered within the app is given to a government, not just used by a company. That's the distinction. And I think the concern is that because of the nature of the way that the Chinese Communist Party exerts such intense control over all industry that there's basically one degree of separation, two at the most, between TikTok and Xi Jinping's administration. Now, part of the issue also is just the way that some of this is camouflaged. I mean, you had some senators like Tom Cotton, who's a Republican from Arkansas, who in this latest hearing with execs from Meta and TikTok and X and, and Discord, I think was the other one, who just asked really asinine questions. He kept asking TikTok CEO uh, Sho Chu whether he had ever been a member of the Communist Party or he had been involved in the Communist Party. Sho Chu is not from China. He's from Singapore. He can't be a part of the Chinese Communist Party. The issue is not him. It's the company above him. And indeed, the company above him is not the only person who makes money from TikTok. I'll show you that in a second. But in terms of like spying, spying, that's another matter. And that becomes a much thornier issue in terms of what data goes on TikTok. It also, there's also been a shift in terms of how we feel about the prospect of a ban. Pew Research did a survey back in December about how we feel about banning TikTok. And support for this has dropped. Back in last March, 50% of U.S. adults told Pew Research they would support the U.S. government banning TikTok. By December, that had dropped from 50% to 38%. Among those who oppose it, that rose a little bit from 22% to 27%. From those who were not sure, it rose from 28% to 35%. So as time has gone on, support for a ban has gotten fuzzier. You also heard from some small business owners today who were quite upset or expressed real upset at the ban or the, the prospect of a ban moving forward through Congress. The Washington Post, Taylor Lorenz, who is an excellent reporter from the Washington Post who covers social media. If you are interested in what's going on on a policy level, she is someone to follow. Taylor Lorenz, in her piece, mentioned someone named Gigi Gonzalez, who's a financial educator from Chicago. Ms. Gonzalez said that banning TikTok would destroy her financially. She said, quote, it would get rid of my biggest source of revenue, unquote. And she's one of the people who, who has been able to use TikTok to get brand deals and speaking gigs. She sells digital courses through there and so on. And a lot of people, raising my own hand, have found ways to use social networks in order to build businesses. Maybe some of you too. If you're watching this right now, maybe you are concerned about what a TikTok ban would mean for you. I would love to know. I would love to know what you're thinking and whether this is a concern of yours or whether you just think that this is a little bit overblown. But I believe that this could actually have a really significant effect on a lot of other people if this is the way that this happened. I also think that it's rather overblown. I understand that there are people who rely on social networks for their business. You know, I'm doing this through a number of social networks because I wanna kinda hedge my bets. I am amazed that such a large number of people are watching on X right now as opposed to YouTube. I love that. But I'm also kind of clear-eyed about the fact you're not likely to be harmed by this as a small business person. That is a very small subset. And by the way, there are other social networks that more people use than TikTok. That isn't even your best place to find people. So if you look at the data, again, going back to Pew Research about how we actually use TikTok, actually. If you look at the people who post on TikTok, 
the overwhelming majority of content, practically all of it, is posted by the most active 25% of TikTok users. A quarter of TikTok users post nearly all of the public content. So the idea that this is going to just decimate this community, uh, I'm not convinced. There are also other platforms that we tend to use more. If you look at the list, and I'm looking at it, I'll show it to you in just a second. This is a Pew Research survey that was conducted in just last year. TikTok on this list, in terms of what most U.S. adults use, is fifth on the list. Do you know what's the number one social network that most U.S. adults use? Number one, YouTube. By far, the number one social network in the country is YouTube. 83% of American adults say they have ever used YouTube. Next is Facebook. 68% have used Facebook. 47% have used Instagram. TikTok is almost tied with Pinterest. But Pinterest is ahead of TikTok. TikTok is somewhere between Pinterest and LinkedIn. Again, not to say that this doesn't matter, not to say that millions of people don't use TikTok for sure, but the impact would be rather more localized. And then you think, well, what about teenagers? Teenagers are really using TikTok. Gallup research, they're also using YouTube. Number one among teenagers, YouTube. Now at the time, this is a survey from last summer, Teenagers said they spend about five hours a day, Lord Jesus, about five hours a day on social media. Boys spend 4.4 hours a day on average. Girls are spending 5.3 hours a day on average per day. Number one social network over all teenagers, significantly, YouTube. It's about two hours a day. TikTok gets about an hour and a half. Girls tend to use TikTok more than boys do, just in terms of the number of hours. And then Instagram, Facebook, much less common. Twitter, WhatsApp, much less common. So I would put it in that context. Yes, teenagers are going to yell and scream. There's going to be great hue and cry from a community of people who uses TikTok. In the scheme of things, let's keep it in some context. There's also the argument that's been made about, oh, there is one other thing, though, before I move on to that. TikTok also is connected to a company called CapCut. If any of you post on social media, you should know CapCut. Maybe you've seen this one, or sometimes you'll watch a video on Instagram or TikTok or somewhere else, and it'll have this CapCut logo at the end. CapCut is owned by ByteDance. It's owned by the same company that owns TikTok. So if you are indeed concerned about the impact of TikTok, CapCut is also something that you need to be mindful of, just to be aware. Let me jump back into the chat for just one second. Sarah, I see your question. Sarah asks, will it get through the Senate, this bill about bike dance and potentially banning TikTok? It's uncertain. Right now, it just doesn't have a very clear path, but it doesn't have clear opposition either. I don't think we really are going to know for a little while. We should know soon. President Biden has said that if he gets the bill, he will sign it. The question is whether or not the Senate is inclined to send it. And that's, that's not really clear, but... I don't think that it would have passed with as much support across the aisle as it did unless it looked likely to actually become law. This is not like a protest bill, right? There's been talk about doing this for a while, but we'll see. I, I think it's got a chance. I do think it's got a chance. But again, it's failed in court before. TikTok is absolutely going to fight this in court. So whether or not it survives the vote, that, that, kind, of remains to, that kind of remains to be seen. Richard, I see the comment you put in the YouTube chat. Richard writes, TikTok's format was unique originally around their short form video content. Now that YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook are hosting short form content, the relevance of TikTok will possibly decline. You may be right. I mean, I am a YouTube partner and I have been seeing many more notices from them about posting YouTube shorts. Now, YouTube shorts are a different animal than what you're watching right now. If you're looking at a YouTube short and you just want 30 seconds, you don't want my in-depth hour, right? And so carving that into another shape is gonna to appeal to different people than, than this will. So I don't know if they're directly com comparable, but they will overlap for sure. 
And let's be real. Like, how many Instagram reels or videos or stories have you seen that end with that little boom, boom, that TikTok puts at the end of every TikTok video? I mean, that's they're posting in both. They're posting in both. So the odds that you are a business person who is only on TikTok and has absolutely no other online presence, I highly doubt. I don't buy it. I do not buy that if you're especially a small business person, are you kidding me? That unless like Instagram or TikTok is the home for every single person in your customer universe, that you're just not even going to bother to be anywhere else. I, I have a hard time believing that. I have a really, really hard time believing that. Also worth noting, one of the factors in terms of whether this could pass, obviously, is Donald Trump as the standard bearer slash I own 51% of this political party of the Republican Party now. Donald Trump is now against banning TikTok. The reason is a little bit screwy, but he has come out against this for one reason in particular. There was a documentary by Citizens United. Yes, that's Citizens United that blamed Mark Zuckerberg, who is the co-founder of Facebook and the CEO of Meta, for pouring a bunch of campaign contributions toward electing Joe Biden in 2020. Now, whether or not that is correct, I have absolutely no idea. But apparently, according to the Washington Post, that documentary inflamed Donald Trump's rage with Mark Zuckerberg, which had already been kind of, you know, rather testy since the 2016 election. And it just rose the antipathy even higher. And so that led, apparently, led Donald Trump to argue that a TikTok ban was a bad idea, mainly because it would help Mark Zuckerberg and it would help Meta as people migrate away from TikTok. He said, among an array of other things, quote, I don't want Facebook, who cheated in the last election, doing better. And then also wrote that they are, in his words, a true enemy of the people. When he was on CNBC, he said, quote, you ban TikTok, Facebook, and others, but mostly Facebook, will be a big beneficiary. And I think Facebook has been very dishonest. I think Facebook has been very bad for our country, especially when it comes to elections. Unquote. That's what he said to CNBC on Monday. This may sound odd to hear from me, but I actually think he's correct. I think Donald Trump is right about that. I think he's right that if people migrated away from TikTok, they would move to a variety of other apps, many of whom are controlled by Meta, particularly Instagram and maybe, maybe Facebook or Threads, but particularly Instagram. All of those, all three of those that I mentioned, as well as WhatsApp, they're all owned by Meta. I certainly feel like Facebook has not been honest in terms of the way that its apps affect teenagers and kids. As for Facebook being very bad for our country, especially when it comes to elections, he probably should not say that considering that Facebook got him elected in 2016. That his entire campaign strategy eschewed conventional ad spending on TV and radio, although they did that in 2016, to focus very hard on voter targeting through Facebook. So if anyone should probably not say anything about Facebook's impact on elections, it's probably Donald Trump. But he is correct, I think, in saying that Meta would be a beneficiary of this. And that's also why I feel like some of this is a little bit it's a little screwy. Like, okay, you get rid of, you know, TikTok. Let's say you do actually ban TikTok in the United States. Fine. Are all those teenagers just going to pick up a book? <laughs> and, like, stop going online and stop sharing videos? They're probably on Instagram, too. They just happen to be on TikTok much more often than they are on Instagram. But they could very easily migrate over. It's not that big a deal. And I don't see how... Teenagers are just going to stop using apps of that nature. Also, they're teenagers. Remember, TikTok is a fad. It's a very successful fad. But teenagers, the thing used to be Friendster. Remember that? No, of course you don't. That's the point. These things come and go. It used to be MySpace. It used to be Facebook. And then that came and went. 
And now with the rise of generative AI, something else is gonna come. Mark my words, something else will come out of the explosion of generative AI that will make TikTok look like a telegraph. It's gonna come. This is going to turn over. But it's not gonna be the way that we think it is. I think the larger concern for me is helping young adults and frankly helping everybody know what we're dealing with and know how to navigate these online spaces. I do not see how TikTok in and of itself is the problem. I think the problem, the challenge is really a lot, it's a lot bigger than that. 